Unity is cancelling the runtime fee. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's see. So this is from Unity. The president and CEO of Unity, Matt Bromberg, which, you know, replaced the old one, Riticello. You know, the guy that wanted to charge you for bullets in games. Hmm. That guy got replaced. Let's see. A message to our community. Unity is cancelling the runtime fee. Yeah, I like this guy already. He's smiling. That's awesome. Three minute read. Damn, that's long. A deep consultation with our community, customers and partners. So we do have a big Unity developer in chat. So I would like to ask you, Mr. Ramis, what do you think about this? Without having read the article yet, we're going to read it in a second. Ramis is one of the programmers of Deep Rock Galactic Survivor game. Very, very successful game on steam and they've been using a version of unity that doesn't have the runtime fee yet so not the latest version but the one prior to that i was pretty confident this was always coming it was too ridiculous certainly makes planning your projects easier yeah so they have been uh foregoing updating the unity version because then they didn't have to deal with the runtime fee and now that that's gone that seems like a good step in the right direction. Maybe they're starting to repair their relationship with their customers, aka everyone that's using Unity. And I could go and start recommending Unity again. Because ultimately, ultimately, for 2D games, Unity is a good engine. It is a good engine. And I have to say it, it's better, miles, miles better than Godot. Miles better, okay? It is. Just a fact. Godot has a lot of stuff they still need to do. After a deep consultation with our community, customers and partners, we've made the decision to cancel the runtime fee for our game customers. Effective immediately. Non-gaming industry customers are not impacted by this modification. Wonder what that means if they still have the installation fee there. But for us, I don't really care about this. This might be animators that do stuff maybe even for big movies. I don't know. I have not used it that way, but it certainly could be used that way. Over the last 20 years, we have partnered with brilliant designers and developers, artists and engineers, publishers and platforms to build a world where great games could be built by anyone for everyone. And that is true. I think making a game in Unity, if you want to get into game development, that is the first step you should always take. Maybe even overtaking Unreal Engine because Unreal Engine is just, just such a big beast. I think Unity is easier to get into. What's better in Unity than Godot? UI is much better. Uh, there's a lot more stuff available to you like graphics, integration and systems. I think the vi video most explaining the big differences of Unity and Godot is this one. There is one part in the video where he explains why he switched from Unity to Godot, or from Godot to Unity. And it was around this time I switched from using Godot to the Unity game engine. Because in Godot, I ended up having to code pretty much all the physics by myself, and I'm really stupid, so it didn't really work out that well. Whereas in Unity, I have all these little helpful things like the friction joint and a few other things. And I kind of have a confession to make. Those prototypes I showed you earlier, well, I kind of recreated those in Unity. My actual prototypes in Godot from like a year ago. Uh, well, they looked like this. All right, this yeah. is the first but alpha nice. male fun. version of this game. It's really cool. Okay, moving on. So, <laughs> now that we have... So, now, this, there's other issues too. There's a bunch of bugs in Godot that I had which made it impossible for me to work with the engine. And on top of that, I just, I don't like saying it, but I hate the UI. I hate it. <laughs> I just don't like the UI of Godot and Unity's UI, while not perfect, is miles better. So maybe we can now start using Unity and recommending it again, which is awesome. We call it democratization game development and it remains our core mission today. Well, maybe they start making good progress now in terms of, you know, real updates, in terms of graphics, like what you know from Unreal Engine, you know, the graphic demos that you see, Nanite and stuff. Maybe they can do this too now. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Unity Dots is still not finished as far as I know. And that was, I started using that like 2020 when I got into game development. It's like four years. They should be able to, you know, 
finalize that. If Unity is so great, why not make your failed good old game in it? Afraid to show your skill issues again? So you're right. If this holds true and I have some spare time, I can make a game in Unity and I'll actually use Unity for the first time in four years again. Yeah, we're gonna make a game in Unity. Why not? It does sound like there has been an internal shift at Unity. Some of the employees have been making noises and are very positive. That are very positive. But obviously the result remains to be seen. Yes, we have to be careful, you know. It is a step in the right direction. I like that. You know, stuff can change for the better. CEO changes can always mean something impactful. So we'll just have to remain and see, wait and see. Let's see. However, we can't pursue that mission in conflict with our customers. At its heart, it must be a partnership built on trust. I've been able to connect with many of you over the past three months. I see. So that's when he took over, right? And I've heard time and time again that you want a strong unity and understand that price increases are a necessary... Are a necessary... Necess are a, necessary, uh, are a necessary part of what enables us to invest in moving gaming forward. But those increases needn't come in a novel and controversial new form. Yes, I agree. That was dumb. It looks like the people didn't think. They just saw doubloons. Which, you know, <laughs> thank God this guy's gone. This guy's an idiot. Like, first he wanted to charge you for bullets and now he wants to charge you for, for installations. What a moron, man. Like, this guy clearly showed that he doesn't know what gaming is about. So I'm happy about this. We want to deliver a value at a fair price in the right way so that you will continue to feel comfortable building your business over long term with Unity as your partner. Yes, that is very, very important. But these are just words. We have to see what they actually do over the course of the next months, two years. We were confident that if we were good partners and deliver great software and services, we were, we've were we barely scratched the surface of what we could do together. So we are reverting to our existing seed-based subscription model for the all gaming customers including those who adopt unity 6 yeah that's what uh, we talked about earlier mr ramis the developer of deep rock galactic survivors the these guys there have been using unity 5 the prior version to unity 6 and maybe maybe i don't know if they can or if they want they could potentially upgrade to unity 6 now i don't know what features unity 6 offers i haven't been following this at all uh, but that might be a good change, you know, maybe there's some cool features that uh, are available then, you know. Another positive sign is that the entire execute, su execute suit has been replaced since the debacle. Something I see is absolutely vital for them to start rebuilding trust. Yeah, and now we can probably use Unity 6, you know, that's awesome. The most performant and stable version of Unity yet. Later this year. Is it true that this is the most performant version of Unity or is this just corporate speech? Unity 6 is 6 though, it is, yeah. Mr. Ram is telling us the truth here, the Mr. Unity uh, all-knowing God. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I guess you will have to test that yourself. Smiley face, true. We're gonna do that, yes. Here's what you can expect. Unity Personal. As announced last year, Uni Unity Personal will, Personal will remain free and we'll be doubling the current revenue. Ooh, funding ceiling from $100,000 to $200,000. Hmm. That means more of you can use Unity at no cost. The Mate with Unity Splash screen will become optional for Unity Personal games made with Unity 6. That's really good. You can make a game in Unity that feels very different from Unity and people won't be able to tell. The only way they can tell is if they take the look at the requirements on your system and it's a small game but it still requires this. This is oftentimes a tell because that's a bit much. Maybe in your game that's like perfectly optimized, I don't know, but oftentimes for me as a game developer this is a tell, okay, Unity or Unreal Engine. Awesome, really cool. Now, Unity Pro and Enterprise will be modifying the subscription pricing and the qualifying annual revenue thresholds. Effective January 1st 2025. These changes will apply to all new and existing Unity Pro and Enterprise customers when you purchase upgrade or renew a subscription on or after this date unity pro an eight percent subscription price increase okay is that bad 20 2200 us dollars annually per seat will apply to unity pro unity pro will be required for customers customers with more than 2000 200000 US dollars in total revenue and funding mm -hmm. a 25% subscription price increase will apply to unity enterprise unity enterprise will be required for customers with more than 25 million <laughs> 
total annual revenue and funding. A minimum subscription requirement may also apply. Because this set of our largest customers have unique needs and may use many of our products and services, we'll be contacting everyone in the days ahead, discuss customized packages. From this point forward, it is our intention to revert to a more traditional cycle of considering any potential price increases only on an annual basis. Our commitment remains that if we change the editor software and terms, software terms in ways that impact you, you may continue using your current version of the software under the previously agreed terms as long as you keep using that version. I like that. This is what you guys have been doing, right, Mr. Ramos? I think that's awesome. Let's say you find a version right now that you like, you find a subscription model that you like, a price that you like, you can use it till forever, essentially. This is like, goes so far against what we've seen in, we're seeing in the gaming industry right now, where you basically earn nothing. You guys remember the Stop Killing Games bullshit? You know, they take it away from you. With this, it looks like you could just use it indefinitely. You have that version, you have the price model. Now it's all in writing, you know. There's no proof that this will stay, but this is awesome. I like it. Yeah, but they said years ago as well, and then tried to change that with the fee debacle initially. Yeah, so, but I would attribute that to the CEO a lot. I would attribute that to Reticello, to be honest, if I was. And to, well, maybe it changes in the future again. You never know. You know, it's just like Valve could change if the leadership changes, of course. But if it stays the way they, it is right now, if the people in charge stay the same, I think it's going to stay. I would too. This new guy was, has made good moves. But again, remains to be seen. Yes. We've updated this commitment last year on our GitHub repository and at Unity.com legal. You can read more about the details of our 2025 pricing changes here. Cancelling the runtime fee for games and instituting these pricing changes will allow us to continue investing to improve game development for everyone while also being better partners. Thank you all for your trust and continued support. We look forward to many, many more years of making great games together. Matt. Yes, that Matt guy is the... CEO of Unity. I like this guy. He's looking very juicy. Very nice glasses. <laughs> He's a typical nerd.